room itself, the region, uh, is not as dramatic as uh, the north of the country, but the country I was in is in lockdown. So uh, I, 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 I will just uh, concentrate on a few things, despite the presentation as more items, because many, many of the views have been already shared and things are in common. A uh, few elements which uh, I'd like to underline. First, uh, there's a, a bunch of literature that's uh, about uh, the impact of virus and epidemic on a globalized society that spans uh, even 30 years back that we did not consider. It. And yes, we are all caught by surprise. At the same time, there have been many Cassandras, <laughs> you know, uh, narrating uh, the reality we are actually living. Uh, we didn't look at because that was conflicting with uh, a developmental model that was based on private consumption and globalization. I think we should learn out of that because uh, it's likely to be the first of this crisis, but not necessarily the last one. Which, to my end, implies that we have to seriously consider the uh, full implication of uh, a model, just a developmental model, that has been reducing the role of the public sphere in favor of the private ones. If I can see, by my point of view, an opportunity in this uh, dramatic situation is that the majority of people is asking, you know, all over the world, a presence of the public sphere to protect themselves. And, uh, and that's where, you know, cities are at the forefront, maybe not on, let's say, on the health side, because health side is mostly, uh, at least in Italy, competence uh, in, 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 in the regions and the national states, notwithstanding there is a, a clear issue of the span of the welfare and how by cutting public spending we have been reducing the capacity of the system to respond. So there is a clear unpreparedness of public health system to deal with something that was anticipated, which is resulting of uh, a view of the society that these epidemic challenge even more than the crisis of 2008. And I would expect that the impact of the crisis at the level, even, even when it's over, and we, it will take time before it's over, it will have an impact that uh, in, 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 you know, in, every, in every people's life, and mostly on those that have less means, that uh, you know, really challenge the society we are used to. So there's an, an issue of rethinking things. Second point to me is uh, we have been to, uh, through uh, in the country to progressive measures of lockdown. I mean, if you go back to the history, you, you may notice that we had first locked down a few cities, then the regions, and the whole country, then all activities, and so on. Why that? You, you might have say, okay, why you didn't lock down everything uh, as uh, in China happened on. Uh, one the reality is that when China locked down Wuhan, it was four percent of the national population. We are locking down one hundred percent of the national population. So one of the challenges in you know deciding what to do, how how what's the spread and length of things you do, is related to you know, to the width of the measure you are taking in relation to to, to the nation as a whole. So to some extent, one of the points uh, we have been uh, concentrating in Rome was to act as much as possible, and I would say always in accordance with the national government. It was critical in Italy to avoid, uh, given the fragmentation of competence, to avoid uh, different uh, local authorities and regions to run uh, their own ways while it was since the beginning clear that there was very easy spread all over the country. So how to get the balance between uh, the different uh, level of the you know, competences and powers in, in different uh, situations is, is as well a challenge. It's not, not an easy. With regard to specific challenges, something that we all experience is, uh, is the medical supplies. Uh, 
we have not. I mean, I, I found out that Italy does not produce Max or ventilators. That's not in Italy. You don't produce that. And then you have to, for, to buy it from here and there, and naturally there have been shortages and so on. Uh, and uh, one something that is popping up now is that uh, we have been uh, everybody assuming that the people that, kind of mm, uh, home quarantine was was easy mechanism to contain the spread of the of the disease. Uh, there are uh, thoughts and debates uh, leading to the hypothesis that probably would be better to uh, have a special uh, location. So basically using hotels uh, left uh, not used in order to allow uh, people found positive to the virus to be quarantined, also the asymptomatic. Because what happened as well in the in the in the home premises that there is a an easily spread within the you know, the, the narrow community, especially when there are elderly people in the uh, you know in the family in the, in the same uh, same physical space. In Italy, it, I don't know if that is a word case, but in Italy, men are much more heat than women by large. It's a, I was looking different uh, data in different countries. It is substantial differences. Uh, social distancing has implications. They are not uh, only on social. There are naturally practical implications and uh, massively economic implications. How do you deal with that? Is a, is a, a massive problem and a problem on global scale, not even a single scale. We have very limited uh, means in order to uh, compensate lack of uh, revenues for the people, salaries and so on. National government has been taking kind of bold measure to do that, but we actually need to think long term if we have to deal with crisis of this end, uh, mechanisms of minimum salaries that can be activated in front of this kind of crisis. Because when you have to lock down people, then you have to give them the means to purchase food simply to be or to pay home rentals and so on. This is becoming crucial in certain sector. First, uh, immediate has been culture, because uh, culture and tourism because have been totally suspended since the, the first lockdown in the country. And uh, these are most people are working on a, basically on, on daily fees. So- uh, One more minute, Luca. Yes, I'm, I'm over. The other things which was pointed out is social services. You know that we as Spain is a country that uh, very elder pe elderly people, uh, part of the uh, mortality ratio in Italy is uh, certainly related to this uh, characteristic. But we have systems where we put elder people in urbanized areas that don't have family assistance all in the same places. And these places are becoming really, really risky. And uh, your experience is things in Spain very tough to be seen uh, at this moment. So a very early measure is to take care of that kind of things and, and the informal settlements. That's another one that has not been taken in charge yet and I think it's a, it's a delayed bomb. And then uh, a lot of things. For what I hope, wish, I think as we have to work on is rebalancing the relationship between the, the, the private sphere the sphere of private consumption and the sphere that we uh, acknowledge as wealth globally. And, and that's a, it is a priority, and it's a priority uh, within cities that are substantially the deliverer of these kind of things. In the meantime, one of the challenges we have, and which was noticed by the Barcelona city as well, is to be able to fulfill with all those that works provide services to the city and so on, because by reducing the, 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 the services, we should reduce the contract payment, and that would imply uh, job uh, loss. So there are technicalities to, in the management of this crisis that impact on everything. Uh, we will be all very glad to share uh, the, the one we have dealt with and where we are dealing, because that's, uh, they are massive and uh, various. Thank you very much, really. Thank you very much for setting up this exchange that I think is really valuable.